Welcome to Nollywood Radio France. I'm your host, Cyprian Johnson. Today, my special guest is Sandra Omo. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm glad I'm here. Thanks for having me. Now, according to your extensive uh, biography, um, you were the first black model to win the prestigious face of Brighton modeling competition in the UK. Is that correct? Very correct. <laughs> and then tell us what happened that very day. Well, um, it was actually my first major competition after my first degree because I studied in the UK and I just finished. And um, so I thought, oh, now I'm ready. So it was my first competition. I was actually the only black girl in the competition. And before then, no black girl had ever won. So I wasn't really prepared. I just wanted to be a part of the competition and, and represent. You know, but um, as God would have it, um, I won the competition. I became the face of writing, and that was the biggest kickoff for my modeling career. Now, so it was it was really amazing. Yeah, that's that is really amazing. But who inspired you to uh, join the competition, or how did you come about this competition? Um, I heard about it, and then I attended the audition. Hmm. And um, I remember then I, I lived in London and I had to travel to and fro from London to Brighton to, to, to audition for, for the competition. Um, I had a friend who um, once competed for the Miss UK and the girl who was organizing the pageant that, that uh, year, she was formerly Miss UK. So I got to hear about it from her. So then I entered into the competition. And apart from that, I always wanted to, to be a model. I want, always wanted to be a professional model, win competitions and stuff like that. So all those put together just made me go into the competition. And I, I knew it was time I was ready. Now, now you, you always wanted to be a model. Why? Why? I, I don't know. Ask me. I wonder. I mean, I grew up um, in a family where um, people often told me the way I walked and stuff like that, that you should be a model. I mean, my eldest sister, I would always be grateful to her. She would always name the names of the biggest models in the world and say to me, they're not as, they're not as better as you. You know, they're not better than you. You know, she would always say, they say, you should go and be a model. You're so skinny the way you are, you know. So I think all that got into my head and I really believed I could and uh, she was right. She was really right. So, so, so you can say thank you to your sister. I I can't say that enough, and she demands it every day. Oh, I think <laughs> she's right. She's right. Now, the 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 next giant step again was when you um, uh, joined also the uh, cast for James Bond movie in two thousand and eight. That's oh wonderful. My God. That is, uh, that is a feat I'm still very proud of. I mean, um, I once had a friend tell me, even if I just enter that place just to eat, I would be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when, when the whole, because it was really a big news in the whole of London, even in, especially in Brighton, because don't forget I had won the face of Brighton the previous year. Yeah. And actually what happened in the Quantum of Solace was they were shooting some scenes in London and there was a particular thing that they needed models. So I was a model, um, a professional model in London as a then, and my agency sent me, and I was one of the models that was picked to be in the scene. Mm. So it wasn't a feature role. It was playing a model in a scene, okay. you know? But um, there were a lot of photographers, a lot of um, pressmen there, and because I was a face of writing, I got to do interview with some of the pressmen who were there. Okay. But then when the article came out in the papers the following day, it had headlines like Face of Writing is the next Bond girl. I saw you know? it. I, saw, yeah. I, I, I read the article, right? Yeah, <laughs> so it was all over the paper. And yes. my manager called me. He lives in Brighton. He said, Oh my God, you didn't tell me you were Bond girl. I said, No, I am not. And then he said, Don't worry. Every publicity is good publicity. You know? <laughs> but the thing is that just being a part of the James Bond movie was really a big feat. I, I mean, I had a good time and it was a great experience shooting for three days with the cast. Okay. That was amazing. Mm. And now, <clears throat> and now coming to the Nollywood, um, coming to the um, Nollywood industry. How did you get into the in, into in, into the Nollywood industry? Oh my God, um, it's something I never thought about. And if someone had told me in 2008 or before then that you would ever be in a Nollywood movie, I'll tell the person you're lying because <clears throat> I never even wanted to be an actor. 
I was just okay with being a model and being a writer, you know. But then in 2008, um, MBGN was Beautiful Girl in Nigeria. We're casting for the very first time in the history of the pageant in the UK. So the organizers of the MBGN had come to London to find uh, representatives to go to Nigeria and compete for MBGN. And I happened to hear about it. So that morning I got dressed, I went for the audition. And I was the only person who was picked to be, to be flown to Nigeria to compete for the MBGN. Wow. So I went back to Nigeria after so many years, I've not been back home since I left home to go to the UK to study. And I won MBGN model. So in 2008, I became an MBGN model. And when I got back um, to the UK, it was it was so big that I began to get in, um, invitations to be in Nollywood movies for producers. Um, I even got a recognition from the Nigerian High Commissioner for the things I've done before. And then I began to think about Nollywood, really. So it was since then that Nollywood began to come into my mind. But then I had to want to be an actor first. And that didn't come until 2010 when I shot my first movie in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So it was after then that I really got into Nollywood. Now, can you explain to our listeners what N MBGN means, first of all? Oh, MBGN stands for Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria. Okay. It's, the, it's the competition that um, um, they send the Nigerian representatives abroad for Miss World. Uh, Miss Universe, Miss Tourism, uh, Model of the World competition. So if you compete in uh, MBG and you become Miss Nigeria, actually, you become the official Miss Nigeria to international competitions. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, every girl who has been to the Miss World or to the Miss Universe has to win at home before you can even get there. Oh, good. And now talking uh, talking about the Nollywood movies, um, how many movies um, have you acted so in so far, right? Uh, about three or four, four of them, because when it comes to Nollywood, I really want to be able to do something inspiring, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, because I don't live in Nigeria, I kind of go to Nigeria uh, one, two, three months, do something and come back. So it's not really easy to walk into the good stuff like that. So um, I did my first Nollywood flick, I think in 2011, late 2011. Mm -hmm. And so I've been in like two or three since then. And one was a site in the UK. And um, that was pretty good shooting in Lagos because Nollywood stuff I've been in, I've done it in Lagos. Okay. So about three movies I've been in so far. And then what, and what role did you play in, in uh, each of these movies? Uh, my first one, I played the supporting role to the main character. Okay. And the okay. second one was just um, um, I played like a main role in a in a series of a particular in a, an episode of a particular series that has been aired in the UK. And the other one as well was also a supporting role. Hey, can you give us the names of uh, the movies? I remember the name because um, I can't remember the name of the series particularly, but I remember the name of. Um, I think one of them is called Royal First Class. Okay, Royal First yeah. Class. Yeah. So listeners, watch out for Royal First Class. <laughs> now, coming to Nollywood, London. So, you know, we're very curious, right? For you, you just, um, you just coming from London to Paris. And yeah. uh, people here also would like to know um, how the Nollywood industry is evolving in London. Um, my question will be, are there cinema theatres showing Nollywood movies and who are their audience in London? Oh, you know, London is um, it's a, it's like a home for Nigerians. They're, they're like, I mean, London is a, it's a Nigerian home, actually. So when you talk about um, who the audience are, it's basically every Nigerian in the UK, you know. And it's not just um, Nigerians. Let's not forget that when it comes to the whole of Africa, as a whole, Nigerian movies are like the, the, the main thing. So now we move on to every Africa in the UK. And not just Africans, even non-African, you know, because when you talk about the film industry in the world, you're talking about Bollywood, Hollywood, and Nollywood. I'm actually surprised to go into countries like Eastern Europe, the Czech Republic, and people say, oh, we're not Nollywood. <laughs> Even in countries like the Czech Republic, you know, people are talking, I'm, I'm talking about Africa, I'm talking about Czech, yes, yes, you know, yes. I'm talking about 
have friends of mine from Puerto Rico, from uh, Latin America, said, oh, we know Nollywood. You know, so it's not just Nigerians or Africans. It's the whole world coming in to come to Nollywood movies, you know. They may not completely understand it, but at least they know about it. So the audience is the whole world these days. And yes, there are cinemas showing Nigerian movies. These days, you can actually buy a ticket and walk into a, a cinema in Nigeria and watch a Nigerian movie. That premieres all the time. For like, in fact, when a Nigerian movie comes out, there's always a premiere in a cinema in the UK. So it's it's really grand in the UK now. Yeah, but yeah. But, but, but what we have now, uh, we have so many premieres. Yeah. Yeah, but not. Um, uh, we don't have uh, the screen of movies like. Uh, you can uh, like the um, Bollywood at times or Hollywood movies in France every Wednesday the movie a movie will be out this is what I mean in in, in the UK do we have such a thing that every Wednesday once in a movie a Nollywood movie will be out in a cinema theater is it uh, is it there's happening? not such a, a culture like that right now but we're not far from that okay not far from that at all i think we i mean you can actually catch a nigerian movie in the cinemas but it's not like a culture thing like bollywood or hollywood but we're not far from that at all now let's move away from united states uh, and I, i'm sorry i said united states to uh, <laughs> united kingdom and now uh, you are now in france okay What's your first impression of the French people before we go into the reception that will be given to you in the Nigerian Embassy? Let's start your first impression when you when you landed in Paris. So, um, prior to now, I had been to Paris on, on vacation before, so but I hadn't really like had time to you know when you come when you go somewhere for like a weekend and then when you come for like two months it's a completely different thing uh my 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 perception of the french people is that they're very uh, protective of their country and their culture and you know that you live in france yeah. <laughs> so they're very protective of their culture and um and they, they're quite welcoming you know they're very welcoming and, and paris is, is a beautiful place with an amazing history that no one can ignore whether you like it or not you know so my first impression is like i'm welcome here but you have to respect the culture okay now talking about the culture you you are now in paris for a project can you tell our listeners uh, why you're in paris um, um and uh, what are the projects you have us at the moment uh, and how long are you going to stay in in uh, paris I'm going to be in Paris. I'm going to be between Paris and London to and fro because while I'm here, I still have stuff to do in London. But uh, the main reason I'm here is because I'm playing the main part in the stage adaptation of the movie Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, I don't know if you've heard about it. It's uh, the award move, uh, winning uh, drama by Elizabeth Taylor and Paul Newman in the 1950s, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. So it's been adapted to play here and it's going to be in the cinemas here in France from September. And I'm playing uh, Maggie, which is Elizabeth Taylor's character. So um, so I have to be here. Rehearsals have started. I'm going to be rehearsing for the next three months before the play goes on stage. So um, it's pretty, really hectic because sometimes when I look at my script, I say, oh my God. Can I put all this in my head? <laughs> but I've got three months, I've got time, and I'm in a I'm in rehearsals like hours every day. So that's the major reason why I'm here. Is, is oh, yes, in English? Okay. English. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. 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 Now uh, there will be a reception for you on Wednesday next week at the Nigerian Embassy in Paris. How do yeah. You, yeah how do you see yourself uh, in terms of promoting the the image of Nigeria abroad? Well, I, I think that um, just um, speaking up for your country anytime you have the opportunity. Um, I, I, for me, I feel really proud when I walk into a place and people say, "Where are you from?" As a Nigerian, you know, it's 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 not it's not uh, very common, especially when you are in a non-English uh, speaking country, you know. So um, I think that everything that I do, every good thing that I do. It's a promotion in a good way for my country. And any bad thing that I do as well, it's also a promotion, but in a bad way for my country. So I just um, 
think that being myself, pursuing my dream, being successful, taking every victory in one at a time is uh, the best that I can do to like promote my country and, and put it out there. You're, you're now a role model in, in London for Africans all over the world and even in France for, uh, for young people in France. So what's going to be your advice for them? Who, they, they would like to be like Sandra Omo. What are you going to tell them? The first thing I say to anyone who's young is have a dream. Mm. You know, mm. now you don't have to dream by any standard. Any dream is good enough as long as it's your dream. Now, having a dream is the beginning. You have to be confident in yourself enough to pursue that dream. You know, it's really very common for us to look down on young people. Like when people are teenagers, like 16, 17, 18, we just we quickly write them off and say, oh, they're nothing. But every dream I had today, every dream I've pursued all my life, I had within me since I was a teenager. Mm. So I know how important it is to have something within you at a very early age and pursue it. So every power that I have right now, I began to dream from when I was a teenager. So those years are really, really important. So the first thing is have a dream. And when you have that dream, pursue it. And if you keep at it, it will definitely come true. Now we have to go to the message you have for your fans. Tell us, what message do you have for your fans? People oh who admire God. you all, all all over around the world, like you know, you 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 wearing James Bond, you know, James <laughs> Bond girl. Uh, you sound like those those press men from Brighton, Bond girl. Oh, well, I, I I'm gonna be back Bond girl soon. I'm gonna be back Bond girl someday. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I get there too. <laughs> I got time. So, what message do you have for your fans? <laughs> um, I want to say a big thank you because first of all, I couldn't be here without God's blessing, and I realized that um, um, I have been really blessed. I have been put in places of opportunities at the right time, and I feel really privileged. You know, I talked about having a dream, but having a dream and then having the privilege and the opportunity to pursue that dream is also another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so first of all, I'm glad for everyone who has um, seen me, doesn't even know me, and has supported me. You have no idea how, how good it feels. Like, I don't even know this person. Mm -hmm. They don't even know me, but they just support you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. So I want to say a big thank you. To everyone out there who supports Sandra Omo for one reason or the other and um, I want to say watch out for more news from Sandra Omo I would definitely keep you um, aware informed and I want to say thank you again I can't say that enough and uh, keep keep being behind me keep being there and I'm, I'm very grateful yeah. Now, for some of, for for uh, for some of your fans who would like to contact you, uh, have you got a website or are you on Twitter? Yeah, you can you can actually uh, connect with me on Facebook and on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, that would be at Omo Sandra, okay. and on Facebook would be I've got a a Facebook page Sandra Omo. So if you just type uh, type on Google Sandra Omo, uh, the Facebook page will probably pop up. But then you can go more specific and go Sandra Omo the One. Okay, so if you go Sandra Omo the One, because that's the name on on, um, on um, Facebook, and it, it will pop up as well. So I've got a fan page on Facebook, Sandra Omo, and you can like that page, and then you can follow the page for more news, or you can go on Twitter at Omo Sandra, and you can always uh, get more news from there. Thank you very Thank much, Sandra Omo, for this conversation. Thank you. Uh, and bye.